I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, God has set out portions for you daily. Now, you, 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 we read yesterday about Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, how the king apportioned daily meats for the people he was watching over. If a man is smart enough to provide daily portions, how much more your father God? He's the smartest. He's the greatest. He knows exactly what to do. And he knows enough to feed you right. See, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God was feeding them with manna. And he was feeding them daily. You see, they could have gathered enough manna that would last them a week as they continued their journey. But God said no. I want you to be feeding daily, fresh. It wasn't the people that suggested, it was God's suggestion. He said, look, don't gather more than in this portion. If you do, it will turn sour. They thought he was joking. Some of them went to, and then they saw it. They saw maggots and worms in the food. What was God up to? It's his nature, brothers and sisters. It is his nature to provide your daily portion. That's his nature. That's his design. Daily portions for you. Yesterday's portion was yesterday's portion. Don't live on today with yesterday's portion. Don't live, don't live your life today with yesterday's portion. What you got yesterday, praise God, glory to his name. But there is another portion for today. Can you let this sink in your heart? Because you can't continue living like one who, who God is just trying to manage. No, God is not trying to manage you. He abundantly supplies for you. Oh, Pastor, if so, why am I not receiving everything? That's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you. So that you begin to meditate on it and, and meditate on it and begin to speak and, and, and declare it. Then it becomes a normal thing to you. That every day you expect goods from God. Praise God. Yes. That's how this thing works. See. Now. Acts in scripture, you remember Acts chapter 4. They prayed, they said, Grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. I remember last week I was telling you, listen, anything that's trying to guard your mouth, anything that, that is hindering you from teaching and speaking in the name of Jesus. Now, speaking in the name of Jesus is a way of sharing your testimony. So first of all, there must be a testimony to share. What is your testimony about Jesus? Not what somebody else told you, what you have experienced with him. Everyone must have an encounter with the Lord. Everyone. Hey, how can the Lord have an encounter with everybody? Oh, yes. Yes! And that encounter is what produces your testimony. And your testimony is what he expects you to tell around the world. He's not telling you to go and teach Bible. That's why we have a lot of confusion in the world. Because a lot of people, rather than tell their testimony about Jesus, they are preaching Bible. And so they say, we're teaching doctrine. There is no other doctrine than telling your story. I'm telling you the truth. Yes. Tell your story. 
Once I was blind, now I see. How did you begin to see? There is a man who came and he touched my eyes and told me to go and wash. Now, which doctrine is going to qualify that? Which doctrine is going to reproduce that? Doctrinally, you don't use mud to heal people's eyes. You use the word to heal people's eyes. And you are telling the guy who they use mud on his eyes and told him to go and wash. And he went to wash and came back saying, you're trying to tell him that? You make a fool of yourself. The same thing the Pharisees tried to do. Yeah, eh, first of all, how, how sure are you that you were? But even they knew, some of them in, in among them, they knew the guy was married. They say, send for his parents. Parents, you, you know how this world is just funny. Sometimes when you think about it, you realize human beings are just the same from everlasting till this day. They are just the same. They know the truth. I, I saw on, on TV a few weeks ago how um, our, I think, House of Rep members had invited some people to come and tell them the issue with the uh, prisons, okay? And then all that drama that they were doing. It, it's laughable. It's laughable because you don't need all that drama to know what's happening in the prison. Most of them, they know already. But you see, they just want this whitewash thing that they are walking and then, and then at the end of the day, it amounts to nothing. You want to really know about the prison? You know who to check from. You don't need to even bring cameras there. No, you know. You know exactly what to do. You know the people to ask if you really want to change things. So that's the same thing with this guy. Some of them, they knew the guy. They knew he was blind. Okay, can we call his parents to come and confirm that he's blind? And then they went to look for the parents and called the parents. Said, yeah, are you the child, parents of this guy? So yeah, we're the parents. Was he born blind? Yes, he was born blind. Now, have you noticed his sin? Yes, yeah, so we're all giving thanks to God that he's sin. So how did he start sin? Then the parents thought to themselves that uh, I'm sure this guy have told them why they're not listening to him. So they're like, well, we know he's our son. And yes, he was born blind. But how he started saying, we don't know. He is of age. Ask him. Let him explain by himself. Wise answer. Because the next thing they would have said, they were like, were you there? Um, no, 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 we're not there. You are false witnesses. Get out of this place. That was where they were aiming, aiming at. So the parents were smart and wise. They said, well, we know he's our son. Yes, of course, they can prove that. And he was born blind. Yes, they can prove that. But how he began to see, they know he sees, but how he began to see was what he told them. So they were careful not to be witnesses without real evidence and facts so they say how he began to see we don't know that one he is of age i believe he could he can tell what happened to him then they went well um uh, uh, that man is not of god the man said i don't understand no. the blind man the former blind man said i don't understand uh, uh, how can god answer somebody that is not of God. How can God hear a sinner? The man you're saying is a sinner. He healed my eyes. <laughs> and they say, will you shut up? What do you know? Now that's what the same characteristics. What do you know? We are your elders. We're telling something. What, what do you know? What, how long have you lived in this life? You that have been blind. What have you even seen? You just started seeing now you're trying to form you know. They try to shut the man down. But the man said, well, I don't know what you guys are up to, but all I know is this. I was blind and that man told me to go wash. He, he used, because they asked him, so how did he um, heal you? Yeah, he, he rubbed something on my eyes and he told me to go and wash. And I went to wash and I came back seeing. You see? You see? What? Was it mud he used or was it plasticine or was it chalk? No, I think it's mud because when I washed this, I, I, I saw it was sandy and, and he said, you see, how can God, and the, this, the, the, those guys argue, 
How can God use mud to put... Does he want to destroy the eyes? This man's method are not real. Ah. The man said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> they troubled the man one time. He said to them, he said, well, I have told you before and you do not believe. Yeah, you're asking me again. If I tell you now, will you become his disciples? They got offended and threw him out of the synagogue. The same thing they will do today. A miracle is standing before you. You still want to disprove it. You want to deny it. You want to say, hey, it's not like that. Or it's not by those kind of things. Ah! Jesus have done a notable miracle. Let us glorify him in it. And not be arguing in the method and this. And I said there are Pharisees amongst us today. Sadducees actually. There are Sadducees amongst us today. Very sad looking people. You don't want the progress, the supernatural progress of anybody. You feel everything must be calculated. Just like you see some preachers tell you, eh, you, you must, if you don't have a job, there is no way God can, 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 can take care of your food. Who told you that? It's important people work. It's important people get busy in their life. But don't tell a lie. Because you're trying to encourage people to do something. For 40 years, the children of Israel did no work. And they never lacked. Don't tell me about the ability of God. Jesus finished preaching to the crowd. They were waiting for three days. Three good days. And Jesus thought to himself, these guys have been with me for three days. Let's feed them. Someone else said, eh, but must you feed them? Do you know how much it's going to cost to feed them? They tried to stop Jesus. But what did he do? Relax. He fed that crowd miraculously. That's what God can do. That's what God does. Thank you, Lord Jesus. These are the things we call signs and wonders. And as a child of God, you must believe in them. You must believe in supernatural occurrences in your life. You must believe in them. You must believe that God is going to come true for you. You must believe these things, brothers and sisters. Believe them. And then the Spirit of God will begin to use you mightily in these areas. When you believe them. It's because of the things we believe. That's why we are bold. We stand bold to declare the counsel of the Lord. We stand bold to declare the healings of God. We stand bold to declare the miraculous supply. I was telling yesterday, you stand in that your office or wherever and you tell them, look, give us six months, give us one year. We will know who's looking good. We will know who's doing well in this office. And then you go before the Lord and say, Father, I have thrown up a challenge. And I know you will not put me to shame. Then begin to do your work. Do your work diligently. Just do your work diligently. One day, someone walk into that office. I said, I don't know. I feel strongly led to give you a car. I'll send the car over. Because it buys a brand new car and sends it out. Wow. Ever, did you know the man before? No, you just pet him. How can you just buy a car? You're not lying. You're, you're lying. You're not telling us the truth. So that's exactly what happened. And they would now use that as a tool. Eh, that's how somebody is not telling us that. I'm telling you that's how the devil operates. But you must not live your life subject to the devil. In that place, a call will come that will bring forth your lifting. At the end of the time you gave to them, you would see how much progress. Now, that's because you are serving the Lord in spirit and in truth. So you follow the Lord. It's not just to sit and say, God, show your power in my life. Show your power in my life. And then you're sleeping. Show your power in my life. Now, that should generate some activities in your heart. I say something, you know, the other day we're talking about this. And then someone says, um... 
Why are believers lazy? I said, no. Why are believers lazy and only praying? I said, they are not praying either. They are not just lazy. They are not praying. I said, what do you mean? I said, if they pray, they will hear God. If they hear God, He will give them instruction. If they carry out the instruction, they will be busy. That's just how life is. It's not just enough to say, I'm praying, I'm serving God. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> if you hear God, He will give instructions. The carrying out of that instruction will keep you busy. This is the truth about it. So when we speak of boldness, we're speaking of boldness to hear God. So when we pray, we are confident that we are going to hear Him. And not just hear Him, we're going to do what He commands us to do. So it's a boldness, in, it's, it's a stirring in your heart. And then when you pray, you can decide, Lord, I'm going to pray until I hear you today. And I told you before, it's not about God speaking, it's about your reception. You, you receive it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing someone you have problem in your eyes. I, I, I'm seeing you have some serious problem with your eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you just stretch your hands towards whatever device you're using right now? Because the Lord wants to heal you. Lord, touch these eyes now. Touch these eyes now. And bring forth the full healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord have healed you. I, I, I just saw that while we pray. And and now now when we when we do pray for one, don't just be looking out there and say, ah, no. Nah. Receive your healing also. If the Lord said pray for someone with, with the eye problem, and then I'm praying for that one, you that have maybe knee problem, oh Lord, touch my knee also. That's what you should do. Touch my knee also. And as the word is being released, you are receiving it by yourself. You're receiving it for yourself. Whatever challenge that I've tampered with your health, I decree right now, be healed, be healed, be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. I'll stop here today and we'll continue tomorrow. God bless you and let his hand be mighty upon your life. Receive blessings from the Lord today in Jesus' name. Amen.